and let us all that we can to build a better future. Establishment media. Establishment media has been dictating to us for a very, very, very long time. Outlets like the New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, Reuters are in this position in which they now dictate what the establishment wants the people to see and hear. It wasn't too long ago this month where the New York Times and Washington Post were cheerleading for the fact that they wanted to identify a whistleblower. Now, the thing is, back in antiquity, I know, seems such a long time ago, where outlets like the New York Times and Washington Post would do their due diligence to protect their sources, to protect whistleblowers, to call out politicians and business tycoons that were abusing their power, exposing the American people to the crimes and abuse of these jagoffs who are in Washington, D.C., who have purposely brought us into this neoliberal nightmare. But thanks to the, well, wonderful Clinton administration, the Telecoms Act, which was done under Bill Clinton's administration, in which corporations start buying all the media in this country. Same people who control our politicians now control our media. However, in these rare moments, we actually see these jagoff people at the New York Times, Washington Post, L.A. Times, Reuters get called out for their hypocrisy. And Jose Vega and his fantastic friends did just that. Now, this was uh, done here at Columbia University in New York City, I believe. And I want to share this video with all of you. It's going viral. Jose Vega, my friends and I confronted the executive directors for the New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, Reuters, for the censorship of Seymour Hirsch, the Uhuru, uh, those are those four black socialists who have been made public enemy number one by the Biden-Harris administration, Julian Assange, Tucker Carlson, Russia Gate. Then the dean of Columbia and security pushed me to the ground and tried to silence me. Let's play this. Oh, is this the lecture hall with Seymour Hirsch? I, I just I'm looking for the one with Seymour Hirsch because it's a policy and press <laughs> hall event. So shouldn't we be talking about the Nord Stream since that's the biggest story of the century? And you guys, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, you have the executive editor of The New York Times there who came out with a phony story to try and block Seymour Hirsch. It just it's just kind of funny how that happened. You know, I mean, did you even acknowledge Seymour Hirsch? All of you are executive editors of papers that broke Pentagon, Me Lai, Watergate. Well, see, okay, Jose, I got to correct you on this. Yes, they used to do that, but now they fire people who do that or they go after their sources who even bring things like the uh, Pentagon Papers or the My Lai, or, or Watergate or anything else. I mean, come on, Jose. Those days are gone, buddy. No, see, <laughs> uh, but I'm just joking around here. I mean, again, look at this audience here. These are people who are really in their own bubble, in their own reality. And you'll see later on how all of these individuals start booing and yelling down at Jose Vega. Just remember these words. I keep, I, I, you look, I know I repeat a lot of statements, but I want this to be drilled into your head. And I say this because it's important for you to keep your own ears open when you see people like this in, in a crowd like this, okay, who are just complacent and okay with this neoliberal hellhole that we're in. A lot of these individuals are the same kind of people who say there's no hate in this house. There's only peace and love. The media can be trusted. I trust MSNBC. I trust the system. These are the same people who also say, oh, if I was alive during the Civil War era, I would have helped the slaves. Oh, if I was alive during World War II, I would have helped the Jews escape the Nazis. These, these people in establishment media want to create this narrative that they are somehow the bulwark against fascism and tyranny, when in fact, they are the heralds of neoliberalism and the corporate nightmare that we're in. They've turned a blind eye to the abuse of power. Oh, willingly, willingly they turned a blind eye. If you're not upset at these people right now for the lies that they have been spewing forth to the American people, I don't know what else to tell you. But again, look at this crowd. None of them are brave. 
is this the same papers or not? I mean, is there anything you've gotten right in the last 20 years or am I mistaken about that? I mean, it's just kind of funny because Iraq, wrong. Syria, wrong. Russiagate, really wrong. Okay, I mean, the list goes on and on. So the last thing you could do to try and actually fix your reputation is acknowledge that through leaks, we had to find out. They tell them to shut up. They, they don't like to be called out. Their bubble has been popped. Their cherry has been popped, dare I say it. That Zelensky was going to bomb Moscow on the anniversary. I mean, if you're so impartial, shouldn't you at least say right that Zelensky was going to bring us on the verge of world war three that seems pretty fair while Julian Assange rots in prison all of you got you know fat checks because he's in jail for doing your job and you know what Tucker Carlson ain't no Seymour Hirsch but he did something you guys are scared to do speak the truth and actually be critical of the war which is why he was actually fired from Fox because you are now look they're all getting upset are being triggered again this is a crowd of quote-unquote corporate journalists who pretend to be brave who probably made a career for themselves especially during the height of the trump administration in regards to calling him out saying oh look at what trump's doing now look at this horrible fascist he's hitler 2.0 oh no he's hitler 2.0 we gotta resist him or he's that saying here's why we need to vote for biden these are the people who sniff their own farts, who think that they're speaking the truth and are great champions of the press. When's the last time any of these media outlets got anything correct? When's the last time you looked at outlets like the New York Times or Washington Post and said, yep, these are the speakers of the truth. They're informing me on how to be a better citizen and showing how corrupt our politicians are. Can anyone truly remember when was the last time you remember the New York Times or Washington Post making you think and being proud of the work that you were reading there? Can anyone truly remember anymore? You are all cowards, every single one of you. None of you have actually had any relevancy. And you know what? The mainstream press is now dying. Nobody's ever going to listen to you again. You have no credibility with the public. The only people who care about what you have to say are elite assholes who have nothing productive to say anymore. And it's dying off. So will you at least say something either about Nord Stream or Ukraine or the fact that Zelensky brought us to the verge of World War Three? And the only reason we knew about that was through leaks? Quiet. You could hear a pin drop on that main stage, but everyone there is so triggered. Like we're here to listen and to be validated. That, again, maybe that's what those people in that uh, room, then that auditorium, sound like. And yes, I use the phrase. Yeah, maybe that's what those people in that auditorium sounded like. Yeah, we're just here to get validated. That's what they sound like. Just remember, that's 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 that's, that's what these uh, uh, people who listen to these wonderful executives at New York Times and Washington Post, Post and Reuters, you know, because, again, when's the last time you remember them really doing their job? I, I'm, go ahead. It's a free speech event, right? You guys are the press. Let's say something here. Mr. Khan, come on. Uh, again, again, look. These these are the same people who say they're resisting corruption. They're speakers of the truth. They, they, they don't like free speech. Not to mention, you know, if this was like, let's say, at a Fox News conservative rally or at a Trump event and somebody was doing this, all these people here in this room would be saying, oh, that individual doing that is so stunning and brave. So beautiful. What a what a what a hero. What a hero. But at their own events, they're like, I'll oh, be quiet. Ugh. How dare you speak? You know, you're the executive head of the New York Times, you know? I'm just trying to get into some good trouble here, man. Woo. Listen, Karen, get out of my face for a second. I gotta talk to these gentlemen. <laughs> well, I just want to hear what they have to say. Go ahead, I'm done. Oh, Karen! There's Karen. 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 You can, you can. Look, it's a Karen. A wild Karen has appeared. Project if we can. Yeah. So thank you. All right. 
wow, that's 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 very brave for that white lady to silence his voice. That's lady, what you're doing is pretty bigoted right now, at least according to the liberal talking point. That's right, vote blue no matter who. You bunch of goddamn hypocrites, K hive, all you jagoffs. Do you think that we need to give uh, our moderator a chance to ask one of the questions? We're on the verge of World War Three. Say something Absolutely about not. this bombing. Sir, we blew up the Nord Stream sir. pipeline. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, don't stand there while there are people rotting in prison. Nobody said anything about Uhuru, right? The socialists who are in jail for being critical of this war? God damn it! Wow, there's police brutality there, guys. Whoa, all you journalists. All you people there to listen. Not a single goddamn brave soul among them. That's why I always say when I look at crowds like this, I, I will assume right off the bat, and yes, I know assuming's wrong, but these people in this auditorium fit the profile of, oh, if I was alive during the Civil War era, I would have helped the slaves. If I was alive during World War II, I would have helped the Jews escape the Nazis. Yes, these people, these people, if you ever hear anyone talk like that, know this, they're talking out of their wazoo. They don't mean it. And if they were alive during that time, I am 100% certain they went through Jack to help anybody. Just throwing it out there. These people want to pretend to be fake resistance fighters, fake journalists. At least say something about the people in jail for being critical of this war. They don't deserve to be in prison right now. Again, he speaks truth to power, but it's not over yet. Hold on. No, 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 no. It ain't over yet because I got this wonderful gem to share with you. Here is part two. You know what? He's right. He's right about doing Assange. He was the only one who did his job, right? Wow, look at them. Oh, look, there's Karen. Karen, look at you. She's so brave. I bet she wrote on her social media group or Facebook group. I had to stop this. These these two Trump people. And I was there, and I fought, and I won. I silenced speech. Don't respect corporate media or its sycophants. They don't deserve it. I think it's. I think now is the time that we're done placating all these people. If they don't want to help themselves and they want to wake up to a rude awakening, so be it. I do have to say this, and I don't know how this election will play out. But if things keep on going the way they are, there's a 50-50 chance Trump could get reelected again. And you know what? I'm looking forward to seeing these people melt down again. That's the only caveat I could take away from a Trump election. I know. Yes, vote blue, no matter who I said it. I want to see you melt down and cry and panic again. I want to see your fake protests. I want to see you guys march downtown and go across the Trump Tower. It's by the river and get herded in like obedient little sheep while these reporters and everyone else is taking photographs and taking photos of your signs. Bunch of fake resistance fighters. Well, get us killed. Why don't you <clears throat> leave those outlets? Why don't you do? Tucker Carlson was kicked out because he had the guts to actually talk about the war. He had the guts. MSNBC fired Donahue. He had the highest rated show on MSNBC. And he got fired for criticizing the invasion of Iraq in 2002. It's a disgrace. You lied about Iraq, Libya, Syria, Ukraine. Oh, every, everyone's telling you got to fall in line. 
Why should we be respectful to corporate media? Look at what they did to all of us in 2016 and 2020. And I'm just going to use those years because I know a lot of you in the viewing audience were once Bernie Sanders supporters. And yes, we're going to be talking about Bernie Sanders in a little bit. But look how they smeared everyone. Look at how they've dismissed anyone calling out the establishment. They don't deserve our respect. And I think it now is the time to stop really treating these people as though well, they don't know. No, they know what they're doing. They're following orders of the establishment. Can you really trust the New York Times to tell you the truth? I mean, they did an article where they said, maybe it's good that we don't know what happened to the Nord Stream pipeline. Maybe it's good that the American people just don't know. Stop asking questions. Stop asking questions, poor people. Supporting bailouts, money printing. Now we're on the brink of World War III. If if, if World War Three kicks off, the blood is on your hands. Hey, can't argue with him there, man. He's correct. So what can we take away from this? It should show all of you that the establishment really hates to be taken out of its comfort zone. They don't like to be called out. They don't like that people don't respect them anymore. And the thing is... <clears throat> All Americans, all Americans should be critical of anyone in the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and their stenographers in corporate media. We need more people to be speaking truth to power. We need more people to step up and get angry. This is why we need independent media, because all of the media right now in this country is controlled by corporations. And what have I said before? Corporations, Wall Street executives, big banks, the top 1%. Own our politicians in the Democratic Party and in the Republican Party. The squad will never resist the DNC. Bernie Sanders will never resist the DNC. The New York Times, Washington Post, Reuters, LA Times, all of them won't tell you the truth. And look, the establishment media is going down in flames. Look at how consumers and Americans, American consumers to be more precise, viewed CNN+. Plus. Gone in one month because CNN thought in their own big headed way that people liked them, that they were irrelevant, that they were irrelevant. But no, the only reason why CNN thought that they were was because Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram inflated their egos and the algorithm favored them. Turns out when Americans really have a choice, they're not going to watch corporate media. It's just being pushed in front of our faces. Look at BuzzFeed News. Oh, oh my goodness. Just just thinking of BuzzFeed will ever will always put a sad, sad feeling in my heart. I will never say the words why I left BuzzFeed. I can never say that now. But see, that's the fate for all corporate media. They're laying people off. They're not doing their jobs. And there's just there in that little auditorium to say, here's why we need to protect the press. These people will never talk about Julian Assange or Edward Snowden, the Nor what really happened with the Nord Stream pipeline, the Hunter Biden laptop story. They won't talk about how we went to Iraq for BS reasons and all the other wars. They won't talk about the failure uh, and the stupidity of Russiagate or Huru. Four black socialists who've been arrested, American citizens, by the way, by the Biden Harris administration. <clears throat> we live in a nightmare, folks, and we need more people to step up. But don't look for help from corporate media or the people that carry water for them. Because the real truth is, all those people in the auditorium that were dismissing Jose Vega and his colleagues. They'll gladly march along with fascism. They won't say it, but they'll gladly follow orders.